Right, let's turn our attention to football. A joyous moment turned bitter. A milestone ended in heartbreak. A special day ending up being a forgetful one. That's what India's World Cup qualifier against Afghanistan turned out to be for the talismanic India captain Sunil Chetri. <clears throat> it was the Afghan brigade that registered a 2-1 win over India. Sunil Chetri, who was playing his 150th international match. Yes, that's right, a landmark game. Also ended up scoring the only goal for the Blue Tigers. And that was the only moment of joy, really, that the Indian contingent experienced. Even though they were playing in front of a home crowd in Guwahati, that says a lot about the state of affairs in the country, as far as football goes. The loss is a big dent to India's World Cup dream. That's certain, the bottom line coming out from this game. After playing four matches, India has only managed to win one and has lost two games. The only draw came against Afghanistan in the away leg just earlier this month. India walked into this game as favourites, as the team to beat, ranked 117th in the world to Afghanistan's rank of 158. But the Afghanistan side proved that ranking really doesn't guarantee your success and it wasn't just the victory that stood out. Afghanistan's resilience that set them apart and helped them produce such a brilliant result. Picture this, a war-torn nation, Taliban in charge, which has hit sports and sport development rather hard. Countries refusing to tour and play in Afghanistan because of their restrictions on sports and women in sports. But none of the turmoil that is raging back home held these men back. And here's worse. Shockingly, this wasn't even their best 11. Afghanistan barely managed to put up a team together for the qualifier. The management and players are currently still locked in a heated dispute. Many players aren't even present after protesting over substandard treatment by the country's football federation. And unlike the Indian team, Afghanistan doesn't have a club season going on for practice, which means they are coming in with zero to no practice at all. And speaking of clubs, four of Afghanistan's players do not even have a club to play for. So says their coach Ashley Westwood. All these problems, genuine massive issues that could derail any campaign was not stopping the Afghan brigade from giving their best, their all. They made these as tools to motivate them, much like their brothers over in the men's cricket team, who have continued to rise despite having a lot at stake. They were written off from doing anything other than possibly winning one match at the ODI Cricket World Cup 2023. They surprised the world by punching above their weight and silencing critics, much like the football team did in Guwahati. And the mastermind behind it all was their coach, Ashley Westwood. The English football manager, who's also managed Bengaluru FC, he's been a pillar of strength and guidance for this bunch. This B-team ragtag team. He voiced his pride though after the game, but the Englishman is not just satisfied with this victory. We remained confident even when we were trailing. To be honest, we also could have won the earlier match. We were always the dominant side in the match. It was unlucky at 0-0 in the last game. We could have won that if we took our chances. I was not under pressure at 1-0 at half-time because I knew we would score. I never felt pressured because I always believed in the boys and I am glad we got the result. Fans at the stadium in fact echoed this, overwhelmed by the result, that the spectators, the Indian fans who had thronged the stadium in support of the hosts, India, started engaging in the Viking claps that Afghan players started to celebrate what the visitors had achieved, not just because this crowd is appreciative of efforts put in by visitors, I can assure you no fan would be that generous though, appreciative sure, but there is rage and anger towards Indian team coach Igor Stimak, who came on board promising the world. And let's face it, it was arguably India's biggest footballing loss. India's last defeat against Afghanistan came way back in 2013. It was the SAF Cup final. But yesterday's defeat was even more painful as it put India's qualification for next round under jeopardy. Apart from Chetri's goal, it was a disappointing performance overall from the home side. They failed to capitalise on the home conditions, the passes were wayward and even the crosses hardly reached their desired targets. Neither Liston Colasso nor Manveer Singh could produce results from either left or right flanks. And even Chetri failed to convert chances early on in the game, understandably so, because Chetri doesn't usually pair up with Manveer and Colasso. So that was also not helping the Indian cause. And these failures all piled up and haunted India in the second half. Despite leading at halftime, Afghanistan made India pay later. And dejected fans made their feelings clear. Soon the chance of Igor Stimak out started doing the rounds. But the man facing all the heat stands resolute and even a tad defiant of turning things around. 
you can see that half of our players are not being able to bring that intensity and I cannot change that in 5 days. I repeat myself again and again and again. I hope you remember all these players were the same players in June, July and Afghanistan is not a different team than Kuwait and Lebanon, teams that we have beaten and dominated. I feel we can qualify and I told you at the press conference prior to this, we are going to be a different team after the long camp, definitely. A defiance Timak is still hopeful of India's chances and he's right. Just a year ago, they've done the impossible. India beat Lebanon, Kuwait and Kyrgyz Republic and also won three international tournaments within the country that included the SAF Cup. So clearly not everything is over for the Indian side. But that picture of Sunil Chetri, the face of Indian football, burying his head in his hands, filled with despair and seeming helplessness after the loss is what I will take back from this game. That's the picture that needs to change. So the big question, can this Indian team really put this loss aside and bring back that intensity? Because there is still games left to be played. Kuwait is waiting in Kolkata, that is early next month. And Qatar, an away game in Doha in the middle of the month coming up. And much at stake still, pride to play for. And if there is even a glimmer of change, the loyal Indian fans, fans of football, will take it.